Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are welcoming back Vice President at Secure Center for Security Policy and longtime Middle East expert and ATP contributor, Claire Lopez. Welcome back, Claire. Thank you, Barry. We have been discussing in a multi-part series the tremendous tragedy that is unfolding in northern Syria with the invasion of Erdogan's Turkish troops into the areas that have been fairly autonomous Kurdish zones. Our allies have been left to their own devices, and it's an ugly picture. There are slaughters of civilians going on. The troops are being cut down in the field. These are troops that fought next to as allies of our American Special Forces troops that were pulled back several weeks ago. And so far, at least, with chemical weapons and possible long-term shelling and bombing of civilian targets, it's ugly in Syria. So, to handle the problem as a PR fight back by the White House, the U.S. is now suggesting that they have not dealt the United States out of Syria entirely. In other words, what the president spoke about is we've only had a token ground presence there, and by themselves, they weren't a viable military option. So moving them south is not so much a military abandonment, but rather the optics don't look good. We are making speeches that we have the options of airstrikes, cruise missiles, massive sanctions, the sanctions have already started. Will they deter Turkey? That's the question. Erdogan says no. However, the Turkish economy is a mess. They have double digit unemployment, interest rates are skyrocketing, the economy has been collapsing, and yet they have just invaded a country to the great horror of the Western world. Claire, will the world together be able to stop Turkey and convince them to pull out? Or, or maybe, and will the United States go back and say, okay, enough's enough, sanctions aren't enough, here come the missiles? Um, so much has happened over the last couple of weeks since that uh, phone call between President Trump and President Erdogan uh, that it can't just simply be undone. The American troops are gone. The air cover that the, the U.S. forces provided is gone. Um, thousands and thousands of Kurdish civilians are on the road fleeing refugees within their own, within their own area. Uh, Kurdish fighters have, have, have died by the hundreds. Uh, and the Turks are not stopping. And, and, and I think this is important to note. Um, even though previously the Turks and the United States had been in discussions about turning that border area between Turkey and, and the northern part of Syria into a safe zone where the Turks wanted to repatriate a bunch of um, Sunni Syrian refugees that they have cared for in Turkey over the last so many years. Um, that was the discussion. Unfortunately, those talks apparently did not finish, or they broke down, I guess I should say. Um, but if you listen to what the Turkish leadership, Erdogan himself, his top officials have been talking about, it's been very clear. Their idea was not just the humanitarian repatriation of, of, of these refugees back uh, into Syria, but rather it was an ethnic cleansing of the Kurdish population in those areas. That has always been uh, the Turkish regime's objective, in addition to which President Erdogan and his top officials openly have been speaking about jihad, their words, not mine, and I don't mean mental yoga, jihad, warfare, number one against the Kurds, yes, but they also have made explicit threats against Cyprus, Greece, the Balkans, other areas that used to be under the Ottoman Empire. So, um, you know, we can't just, you know, rewind the clock and, and turn back. But um, as I've said in some other interviews 
uh, recently, what is missing, I think, on the side of the United States is a real uh, cohesive, coherent uh, document, expression of what are our core compelling national security interests in the region, what is our vision of the outcome we wish to see and which we believe is obtainable, is attainable. Um, we don't have that. And so I think what we're seeing rather than, uh, you know, uh, uh, steps in, in, in uh, accord with, with a previously expressed um, such, a, such a strategy is, is kind of a willy-nilly response to events on the ground or the telephone, as the case may be. You're right. And I hesitate to explain to anybody what the American strategy is at this point, because all the president said is, I said I was going to bring the troops home, and I'm doing that. And I can't figure out if there is a strategy for Syria other than that. So the big question now, Claire, as you pointed out, Kurds are being killed right now. Civilians, men and women in uniform, their houses are being leveled, the hospitals have been hit, the prisons that were holding the ISIS fighters are being bombed and prisoners are escaping by the hundreds. What a lot of people are concerned about is, will the Kurds survive? Well, yes, I do think the Kurds as a people will survive with heavy losses, just as you're, as you're describing, Barry. Um, they will withdraw to, to other areas. Yes, they will survive as a people. But the point is, back, back to the United States, what is the end scenario that we wish to see in the region that is to our best national security interest? This isn't just about the, the Kurds, although that's an important component of it. It's not just about Israel either, although another extremely important component of it. But what is our vision uh, for an outcome, for the end scenario we wish to see in the Middle East, knowing and understanding what the jihadist objectives are of at least two regimes, the Islamic Republic of Iran, and uh, the, the Turkish regime of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood um, regime of, 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 of uh, President Erdogan. Understanding, and I think this is what's lacking, understanding the drivers, the intent, the motivation of these big players, as well as other players from the outside, like Russia, uh, in the region is critical to formulating our own national security strategy. But I don't see that that's been done, and I think it's urgently needed. Boy, are you right. And on this point, you agree with me, the Congress, most of the press, and leaders around the world. We will wait to see if there is a new policy besides bring troops home that's expressed anytime soon from the White House. Thanks, Claire, for joining us on ATP Report today. And for all of you viewers out there, please take out your cell phone, type the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. You will be subscribed to our text message service. You'll get this and all of our videos, reports, and updates on a daily basis. You don't have to pay for that subscription. It's free from ATP, and you'll be up to date on a consistent basis. All you have to do is send truth to 88202. Thanks again from ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum.